With the 2026 season and a new era of F1 cars approaching, it is time to have a look at what the new generation will look like and how it behaves aerodynamically. In my previous videos I already showed you how to design the regulation boxes, how to read the rules and how to design specific parts. Today we want to have a look at a fully designed 2026 F1 car and I want to thank Emil Quist, a very talented car designer, for providing me his design on which he worked for over a year now and which seems to be the best representation of a 2026 F1 car we have seen so far. You can find all his details and links to his further work in the description below. In addition to that, we simulated his model with Airshaper, a platform which allows you to run your own CFD simulations and we used the highest level of simulation with 100 million cells and adaptive mesh refinement, which are the same settings Lucas Di Grassi was using for the Generation 5 Formula E cars. So let's dive into that. At the front wing we can see a similar design to pre-2009 cars, now with three elements and the top two can change angle on the straights. For the DRS mechanism there is a structure in the center. Front wing strakes are allowed again and elements on the front wing end plate help to guide air around the front wheels. The upper deflectors are gone. The car has a pushrod suspension at front and rear and overall reminds us to previous F1 generations. It now has a flat floor again with multiple veins and we see a floor board with vertical and horizontal elements. The bodywork is downwashing, has wide side pods and a huge undercut area to get more clean air to the back. The rear wing has traditional end plates again and the cooling opening sits around the exhaust pipe. At the floor we can see a plank, mandatory openings at the side, two strakes in the diffuser and cascades at floor and wheel. So how do F1 teams assess such a design? They use X cuts through the car and look at the total pressure. So before the car everything is red, the air is full of energy. And now the car is pushing through this air. We can see how first boundary layers are building up, especially in the connection areas. You can see here how losses of the front wing mountings are flowing downstream. At the same time we see that the DRS actuator shape creates separations and the outboard veins create an inwashing vortex. And now we approach the front wheels which are our biggest problem aerodynamically. They create a huge wake which will reduce downforce massively if it hits important devices like a wing. So we want to keep it as far away from the rest of the car as possible. But we don't have a bargeboard area and instead even an inwashing floorboard. The vein behind the front wheel helps to push the middle of the wake outboard. Additionally, the floorboard can help to increase pressure behind the front wheel to push more wake outboard. And we can see here that it works well in the middle. But the upper wake stays pretty much where it is and the lower wake hits the lower outboard part of the floor. So teams will work hard here to push the wake further outboard. The floorboard with its three horizontal elements is aligned nicely for the upper two parts but the lower one creates a big separation which will cause trouble later on. In the middle we can now see the cockpit losses appearing plus losses from halo and mirrors which is normal. Important is just to guide them to the back of the car without hitting anything important. But we also see a separation from the outboard side pod inlet which is something we want to avoid. So here we would update the side pod inlet with a bigger radius and a slightly different shape. The bodywork now drags all these losses down into the diffuser area which is something we want to avoid and here it makes sense to create a clear path for them to exit the car between beam and rear wing. Just before the rear wheels we can see how flow separates at the edge and travels to the center and with the floorboard losses we saw earlier. And also at the side opening we see more separations forming which is hard to avoid but these separations pull towards the center and are expanded by the diffuser. At the rear wing we see the formation of tip vortices which support upwash and in the center we can see two large separation bubbles which result from the rear wing mountings. And in the end behind the car we end up with a huge and dirty wake in which the following car will drive. So to remind you, ideally everything is red, which means high energy, but the car behind now sees this. 
so it is not ideal for following another car and it seems like F1 will introduce old problems again. The wake is dirtier, they rely on more downforce from wings which are more sensitive to dirty air and hence it will be harder to follow. But to understand the aerodynamics around this car even better, we can take a look at this in 3D. So this is our car and these are our biggest losses. Around the wheels is normal, everything else we want to avoid. So there are lots of little details we can improve, like the suspension arm alignment or a bigger radius around the airbox inlet to avoid separations. And here we also see the side pod inlet separations we mentioned earlier. If we want to see more details we can have a look at this. Here we see even separations from the front wing sky hooks and boundary layer building up on surfaces. Important here is that front and especially rear wing are in clean air. And you see how important it is to keep the wake outside. But the upper front rear wake is dangerously close to the rear wing and this simulation is done in a straight line. So as soon as the car turns the wake could hit the rear wing and you would lose a lot of downforce and it would be tricky to drive, killing the driver's confidence. So teams will try to push the upper wake further outboard, which you can partly do with the mirrors and mirror stalks. Also nice to see here is the ditch of clean air going down to the top of the diffuser. Keeping this path clean has high priority. And you could keep it clean by pushing losses longer outboard with bigger side pods. You can see a pretty clean underbody flow, but with the described losses pulling in from the side, which you would try to avoid. And in the end, you can see in what a wake the following car will drive. So thanks to Emil's design and Airshaper simulation, we have a pretty clear understanding now of what to expect from the 2026 F1 cars and which areas teams will concentrate on. The car looks more traditional and aerodynamically it seems like old challenges will appear again. So check out Emil's design with the links below and check out Airshaper to run your own CFD simulations. Let me know your design ideas in the comments below and see you at the next one.